What do you think he should do to you on the day of judgment? <laughs> If he if he's uh, he's good and he's righteous. He's good. I mean, <laughs> that's hard to say, but uh, uh -huh. I mean, the right thing would be obviously treat everybody equally, um, persecute those, those who don't obey. True. Um, uh, but in but? in like my fantasy world, you'd be like, you know, oh God, but I've done this and that, and I've True. been so so good and diligent and did this. So why am I being condemned? Now? Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, the the good righteous one that I know condemn me and, yeah. and tell me that. And, and see, somebody some people think that God allow, sends people to hell. God really doesn't. Mm -hmm. the, what what happens is we're already on our way to hell mm -hmm. because we're all born sinners. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, but what God does, He offers us us a way out. Go before a judge, committing these crimes, and you could pay that judge off under the table, and He let you free. What kind of judge would He be? Yeah, corrupt, corrupt, corrupt judge. Well, yeah. God, we can't pay him off, no yeah. matter how good we are. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says there is a way you can be made right with God, um, even though you've broken the standard. If there's a way you can can erase all the debt, you have any idea what He's done for you? Even though we we are guilty, you have any idea what He's done for you to erase your debt? Yeah, I mean, uh, Easter passed not too long ago. He died on the cross for, my, for me. Yeah, for everybody. Everybody, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put it, since you already know the story, I'll put it to you in this last illustration. Mm -hmm. Imagine, man, that you were a murderer. You have any idea who killed Jesus? We did. Yeah. We killed him with our sin. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, earthly-wise, you, you, you stand before a judge, and you have just murdered 20 people. You, he can't let you free. Rightful judge scares you to be executed in a week. They put you in an electric chair. Quasi, they put that bag over your face, and they strap both of your arms in the, the chair and both of your legs. Then the executioner walks out of the room, and he puts his hand on the switch. And all of a sudden, quasi, to everybody's surprise, the door flies open. And you can't see anything, but you hear footsteps getting closer to your execution chair, and you're trying to figure out what's going on. Well, this bag slowly lifts off your head, and there stands a judge that rightfully gave you your punishment. And he's standing there with tears in his eyes streaming down his face, and his hands are shaking. He pulls his key out of his pocket and unloosens your chains and tells you to stand next to the chair. Probably pretty confused right about mm -hmm. now, right? But as, he, as you're standing up, standing next to the chair confused, at the same time, he's turning around, and in his stroller, he picks up this two-year-old innocent son, picks him up, kisses him one last time, and he sits him in your place. He straps a little bit of arms in that chair, put the, his legs in the cuffs, and he put that lecture hammer on his head and put the bag over his face and walks out of the room looking at his son one last time. He tells the executioner to step out of the way with his voice trembling. With tears dreaming down his face, he covers his ears of his crying son, and he flips the switch, executing his innocent son for a guilty murder like you. All of a sudden, he comes back in. He falls on that floor with his hands and knees looking at you. He says, Quasi, you see how much I love you that I'll execute my innocent son for a murder. Would you accept what my son's done in this chair? Man, he looks at you. That's, that's a great illustration you only have, right there. You, I got chills and everything. Like you only have two choices, Quasi. Yeah. You can either accept it, mm -hmm. and that judge embraces you and tells you, man, you're free to go. The only thing you're going to want to do is tell people what the son has done for you. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to want to live Absolutely. another way. Absolutely. Your whole desires are changed Absolutely. because of the love of the judge, not the punishment. Mm -hmm. Punishment never really changes anybody. Right. It's the love of God that he would send his son for us. Yeah. 2,000 years ago, he sends his baby boy. And while, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, man, the Bible says he paid the price. And here we are just enjoying the sin that he saved us from, right? Mm -hmm. And if you would accept what the son has done in the chair on the cross, the Bible says God will wipe your deck completely clean. And I promise you, you'll be different. Yeah. Because of the love of Jesus, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But Absolutely. on the flip side, quasi, if you reject it, the judge is only left to do one thing. You have any idea what that is? To finish the execution. Absolutely. Yeah. He couldn't do any other thing because yeah. you left him no choice. Right. He's executed his son already. Right. And your only choice was to choose it or not choose it. Mm -hmm. And he's only left to give you what you deserve. See, so we already on our we already have committed crimes against God that deserves hell, but he loves us so much, man. That the only hope you got is if you would just say, God, I'm sorry. I extend my life completely to you, and I want a relationship, not just a religion. I'm not going to want to live for myself anymore. I recognize what the Son has done. The Bible says when he on that cross, the Bible says it is finished when he paid that, pro uh, paid that price for us. They spit on him quasi. They called him names. They had the audacity to hang Jesus Christ on the cross butt naked. Mm. Yeah. Stripped him down, man. Ripped his back open. And he said it is finished. He paid the price, man. The only thing he's saying. Quasi, man, if I gave my life for you, it only makes sense for you to do what? To obey. Oh, man, it's best you know how, Quasi. 
Hey, you know what? <laughs> profess. Profess what just happened. <laughs> Absolutely. Man. Red Light says, man, I'm not really interested in following Jesus right now. I'm young. I want to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yellow Light says, I really do need to consider this, but I'm not ready to consider it right now, but I will give it a thought. Green Light says, man, I'm ready to follow Jesus. I know it. I know it. I've been running. What would you say yet? Man. Um, I would... Um so I would have two answers to that. Okay. I would say that um, the, the Christian quasi, um, the um, born again uh, guy would say I'm 100% yeah. ready to go. Okay. Um, the, the trying to get right yeah. back again quasi, the current one that I am right now, I would say uh, more so yellow light. That's a good, um, that's a good, yeah, um, good answer. That I'm, 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 I know, yeah. I know what uh, needs to happen. I know what I need to follow. Yeah. Um, and I need to get there, but um, yeah. I guess, I guess my all my life I've had somebody push me um, to yeah. follow. Um, yeah. And I haven't, I haven't been pushed myself like I got you. for my my own bodily for sure to go out and do this. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, my, my Christian okay. self would then say, "Green light, like, yeah. come on, let's let's do it. Like, what am I waiting for?" You yeah, know? for sure. Um, yeah, <clears throat> but uh, due to certain circumstances and what's been going on uh, recently, and yeah, um, I just I'm I'm more so yellow light right now. Yeah, I would okay. Say, I would say. Let me give you one illustration mm -hmm. that may help you. Okay. Um, um, I was probably feeling like you felt at the same time somebody presented this to me. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I was thinking is that I want to do it, uh -huh. but I know me. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if I can. I. I don't want to say it and go back on it. Right. right? Exactly. Exactly. See what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's how you feel. That's where I'm, at. <laughs> I'm gonna close with two illustrations, okay. and then I'll let you think through it. Just say right now, Quasi, you got shot in your side, and man, you were bleeding. You got to get to the doctor, and you got to get right. You got to get that bleeding stopped, because if you don't, you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. And you say, you look at me and say something silly, it's like, "Well, let me try to stop the bleeding before I go to the doctor. I'll stop it, and then I'll go to the doctor." How does that sound? Sounds idiotic, really. Yeah. Why, why is that? <laughs> uh, because you can't, you don't know what's what's physically going on inside your body. It's, there's no telling. There's no telling. Uh, you could have punctured an organ and your, your body is failing and you just don't yeah. feel it because your adrenaline is you know, okay. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. The logical thing is to go to the doctor to stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. But right now, Quasi, here's the deal. Right now, you living for yourself and not Jesus. You're bleeding out. Your sin is going to cause you to die and go straight to hell. You can't fix yourself. The Bible says he is the great physician. He's the healer. If you fall on the mercy seat of Jesus, quasi, and tell God, I can't stop my bleeding. I cannot stop my sinning. There's sin that you, I know, for, like you, like, like I will, there was sin that I love that I did not want to give up. If I knew if I followed Jesus, I would have to give up some of the sin that I love and I enjoy. But I knew that that sin was going to cause me to go straight to hell. Bible says you cannot serve two masters. You will hate one and love the other, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I knew it. I knew my sin was going to ultimately pimp me. And so this is what I decided. So four ways you're going to try to fix your bleeding. One is you're going to reach out to relationships. You're going to run towards people to try to fix you. Mm -hmm. A relation, relationship with a girl or if I, if I could, my daddy could accept me. Or, I mean, all types of relationships we run to try to patch that bleeding. Mm -hmm. The other way we try to fix it is with, with, with a, a riches. Like we run towards success. Mm -hmm. But man, that, that only goes so long. Some of the most richest people in the world, you know what they want to do to their life in the end? They want to kill themselves. Oh, okay. You know how many people that are famous that try to, DMX? Yeah. Michael Jackson? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, all these people, Whitney Houston, they just, they try to numb the pain, which is another one is runs. They, they try to, they feel that guilt and they try to numb it with alcohol. Mine was pornography. Dude, I used to try to put numb my pain with pornography all the time. The other thing is with religion. They go to church, they sing, they do all these things. But on Monday through Saturday, they still have no power to, over the control of their sin. They're still bleeding. Mm -hmm. So four ways men try to pass their brokenness. Their bleeding is riches, runs, relationships, religion, right? Religion. Yeah. So they try to stop the bleeding, but, man, you can't do it. That's why you need him. If you try to fix yourself quasi and say, man, I'm going to fix myself up and then go to Jesus. That's like a man is bleeding and say, man, let me fix myself up before I go to the doctor. So to make that commitment, even if it's just a mustard seed, and if you do that quasi, he'll change every bit of desire that you have. The way you think, the, your direction, your, your, all your want-tos are going to change because you have an encounter with Jesus and you see what he did on that cross. It just quite naturally just changes who you are.
it's, it, 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 you can't even help it because he's so powerful. He's a God that created a whole universe. Mm -hmm. He will change you. And you got to trust him just a mustard seed. You lock on to him, he will change you, Quasi. And it may take you 10 years, but that's okay. okay. He's coming after you, man. Okay. What you think? You got any questions for me at all? Man, uh, <laughs> where, do I, uh, where do I attend your church? <laughs> no. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. No, I, I really did um, love the analogies that you gave me. Um, I have never even heard of the, um, the analogy that you gave with the, with the judge and, okay. uh, you know, um, sure. sacrificing, yeah. like, you know, in, uh, in a death sentence. Um, that brings a lot of light to, um, to what I've already known. Yeah, bro. In, yeah. In that, but it, it kind of brings up a personal aspect. Yeah, bro. Um,